All right, guys, let's take a look now at question two of the November paper of 2022, paper one. And question 2.1 reads as follows. It says, the first term of a geometric series is 14 and the sixth term is 448. 2.1.1 is asking us to calculate the value of the constant ratio. Now, why constant ratio? It is because they have already told us that the person is geometric. Okay, cool. Now, um, this means we know for a fact that the first term is 14. We don't know what the second term is. We don't know what the third term is. We don't know what the fourth term is. We don't know these terms, the, the, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. But we know that the sixth term is something, okay? We know for a fact that the sixth term is going to be 448. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We know the term in the beginning, which is known as term one, also known as the A value, okay? So we know the A value, we know term one, we know term six as well, but we do not know what the other terms are. So what we're trying to find here is what is the constant ratio. Now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I know the second term and the first term to try and work out what the ratio is going to be. So I'm basically working from what? I'm working from this here, right? So we know the general term of this pattern is a r to the power of n take away one. The value of the term is 448. The first term, which happens to be a, I'm stealing it from this over here. So that's what's going to be our a value. We happen to have the number 14. We don't know what the ratio is. That is what we are asked to work out. And the position at which you're going to find this term is known, and it happens to be position 6, okay? Uh, N minus 1, of course, very important. That becomes 6, uh, take away 1. Now, I don't like the 14. I'm going to divide both sides by 14. And when you divide both sides by 14, over 14 on the right-hand side, over 14 on the left-hand side, and I promise you 448 divided by 14 gives you 32, right? So I end up with 32 on the left. I have R on the right-hand side in brackets. Raised to the power 6, take away 1, leaves us with 5. Now, 32 in exponential form, if I write it with a prime base, it's going to give you 2 to the power 5. So I'm going to sit with 2 to the power 5 is R to the power 5. And I think you'll agree with me that we can conclude that R has to be equal to 2 because that is the only way that equation will make sense. Second question, 2.1.2 says we need to determine uh, the number of consecutive terms that must be added to the first six terms of the series in order to obtain a sum of 114,674. Now that's a mouthful, okay? So let's try and analyze this. So what does that actually mean? We want you to find the number of terms that must be added to the first six terms. So that means you have got term one, you've got term two, you've got term three, you've got all of them until term six. And then you have term seven, you've got term eight, you've got term nine, and you've got all these things until some number we don't know, okay? Some term, we don't know what it is. Right, good. So you have the first six terms first, okay? Now you've got these terms are the ones they're asking us to figure out because the question is saying, find the number of consecutive terms that must be added on these ones. So what are these? How many of these do we have to add on top of this for our sum to become a 114,674? So when you add all this, the sum is going to be what we're looking at over there, okay? So what I'm going to do here is acknowledge the fact that we know what the sum, the total sum of everything combined, okay? The sum of all of them combined will be equal to 114674. Okay, what do we know except the sum? We know that the first term of the pattern we found from the previous uh, given information that it was at the top there, 14. The first term is 14 of this particular pattern. So I'm gonna have 14 there, right? A is 14. And what else do I know? I know the ratio is two, we just worked it out. So I'm just gonna try and figure out how many terms must be added for us to end up with the sum that we are looking at over here, okay? So I don't know if I can be able to move this stuff left, just so we have space here for uh, the calculation. Maybe it's gonna help if we just go and build a box for ourselves and try and see maybe in the 
uh, speech bubble that I have here, what we're going to get is the sum of this particular expression. Now, the formula for the sum of a geometric pattern is Sn equals to a uh, r to the n take away 1 divided by r take away 1. The sum is 114674 four, equals the first term is 14. The ratio is 2. We don't know how many terms are added. We know that the ratio is 2 take away 1. Now, on the denominator, 2 minus 1 becomes 1. So I'm just going to end up with 14 into 2 to the power of n take away 1 is 114674. If you divide 114674 by the number 2, not 2 but 14, because you're trying to get rid of that, you end up with 8192 is 2 to the power of n take away 1. If you add 1 on both sides, you end up with, um, actually that's a 1, this is a 1, okay? That's a 1. If I add uh, 1 on both sides, I end up with 8192 is 2 to the power of n, okay? Now I'm going to try and simplify this by prime factorizing that number that you're looking at on the left hand side and if you prime factorize it it is actually equivalent to 2 to the power of 13 and then on the right hand side you still have 2 to the power of n that means 13 is equal to n because that's the only way this equation can be true now once i've done this i'm just going to acknowledge the fact that you need 13 terms in the original expression to end up with a sum of 114,674. So all from term 1 to Tn, it literally implies that this here is the 13th term, that's T13. Now if I've got that as T13, and I already know that this is 6 terms here, so the number of terms that I need here is definitely supposed to be 7 terms, because 6 terms added with 7 terms will give you 13 terms. So the number of terms that we need here in order to get the sum that they require is going to be 7. So we need 7 terms for us to be able to uh, get the, 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 the sum that we are actually interested in uh, figuring out here. Very powerful. Okay. Now the next question is 2.1.3 and it says to us here we need to find um, the following. It says if the first term of another series is 4 for 8 and the sixth term is 14. Calculate the sum to infinity of the new series. Okay, so if we're trying to find the sum to infinity, we're obviously going to use the formula for figuring out the sum to infinity. Okay, now in order for us to be able to do that, what we need to do is, of course, I write down the series. The first term of this series is 4 for 8. Okay, uh, that's the first term. We don't know the second term, we don't know the third term, we don't know the fourth term. We don't know the fifth term, but the sixth term happens to be equal to 14. Now, if you think about it, this is ex exactly the same as uh, the pattern that we had. It's just that T1 and T6 have been switched around. They've been swapped. So if you travel from 14, if you go back and you look at it, just look at it and think about what do you do to move from 14 to uh, 448. In order to move from 14 to 2 to 448, we will multiply by R. We multiply by the common ratio. So you multiply by r, and now r is 2. To get to the next one, we multiply by r. And we know that we've been multiplying by 2 because we worked out that r equals to 2. So times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. You multiply by 2 to go forward. Now, if going forward takes me multiplication by 2, it implies that revi uh, reversing that, if you're going to go back, you don't have to multiply, but you'll have to divide, okay? Very important for us to see that and understand what that really means, okay? Very important. So, so if I'm going back, I'll have to divide by 2. If I go back, I'll have to divide by 2. If I go back, I'll have to divide by 2. Okay? So that's going to actually give you an idea of what your common ratio is going to be for the new pattern that we are talking about. Right. Now, if going forward was multiplying, they're giving us a new pattern. They say it starts with 4 for 8. Its sixth term is 14. That means that our ratio in this particular case, okay, our ratio will definitely have to be a half. So if you multiply by a half, and you multiply by a half, and you multiply by a half, and you multiply by a half, you are going to eventually end up with that term, which is 14 at the sixth position. Right. So what's the formula for sum to infinity? Sum to infinity is a divided by 1 minus r, and of course the ratio has to be between 1 and negative 1, and yes, half is between negative 1 and 1, so we're happy to see that. Our a value happens to be 4, 4, 8. Uh, 1 is a number. The ratio happens to be a half, so I think the sum to infinity for this particular question will have to be equal to 
896 because I think you just have to subtract half from one, you get half. Dividing 448 by half is equivalent to doubling 448 and that gives you the 896 that we are uh, having here as our solution. And now the last question uh, is asking us to work out a sigma uh, equation here. It's a sigma, uh, sigma here, okay, quickly. It says if the sum that is expressed in sigma notation of 1 over 3p plus 1 over 6 uh, from p equals 0 until p equals to k is 20 and 1 over 6. We want you to determine the value of k. Now, what does each part mean here? Well, we need to understand the following. First of all, the bottom part here, this part that says p is 0, means this is where you're going to start subbing your p. You're going to start by subbing p with 0. And then the k at the top tells you this is where you're going to stop subbing your k value. So you're going to stop subbing k, I mean p, with that number at the top. And what you have in the brackets here is the general term of your, um, of your pattern. Okay, that's the general term, aka tn, all right? That is the tn, and what you have on the right-hand side is the sum. So I've got the sum. It is 20 and 1 over 6. I've got the general term. I can figure out the terms of my expression. So I can be able to use this to figure out what's the terms of this particular series. And then I have the sum, so I just have to figure out how many terms must be added for us to be able to figure out the k value, right? So let's see what is going to happen. Now, uh, let's try and figure out what the values, what the terms are. Let's try and figure out what the terms are. The terms are what you get when you change this p value. I'm going to keep changing p, starting with the value 0, okay? What is this going to be? It's going to be a third of 0, right? Plus 1 over 6. That's what you get for the first term. And then we have to add that with a third. Term 2 is 1 over 3, and then we have to change p to 1, plus 1 over 6. And then the third term is what you get when you change p, and you replace it with 2, plus 1 over 6. And then you keep doing this until you get to the last term, okay? And then when you get to the last term, the answer, after you've added all the terms, will be equal to 20 and 1 over 6, okay? So what is the first term? Well, the first term is just 1 over 6. What is the second term? The second term is 1 over 3 times 1 plus 1 over 6. If you try and find the value of that, you're going to get uh, 3 over 6, okay? Because 1 over 3, uh, yes, it's going to be 3 over 6. And the third term is 2 over 3 plus 1 over 6. If you try and add those, you're going to get 5 over 6. We do this game until we get to whatever the value of the term is going to be. And then on the right hand side, 20 and 1 over 6. To convert it to a, func f uh, a fraction that is an improper fraction is going to be equal to 121 divided by 6. I think you guys will remember that you must multiply 6 and 20 to get uh, uh, 20 times 6, which is 120. And then you have to you multiply there. And then after that, you're going to add the result with 1. That's where the 121 over 6 comes from. OK, so on the left hand side, we've got the series. We need to now find the information about the series. What do we know about that? We know that the first term is a, is a 1 over 6. We know that the um, common difference, because this is definitely linear, is going to be 1 over 3, which is what you get when you subtract these two terms. You will get the common difference. So t2 minus t1, 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6 is 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3, where we don't know how many terms are being added, but we know that the sum of all these terms is going to be 121 divided by 6. So now I'm going to revert back so the formula of summing these guys up, which is the arithmetic sum, okay? And the formula for the arithmetic sum is n halves into 2a added with n take away d. Take away 1 and multiply it by d. So we've got 1, 2, 1 over 6. We don't know how many terms are added. We know for a fact that this is 2 times the first term, which is 1 over 6. We're adding this with n. We're taking away 1 and we're multiplying that with 1 over 3. So I don't like fractions, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 6 because I'm trying to undo the division by 6 on the left-hand side. So when I multiply by 6 on both sides, okay, just multiplying the left by 6 and multiplying by right, the right-hand side by 6, what happens is that you just end up with 1, 2, 1 on the left, and then that gives you 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you get 3n into uh, 2 over 6 plus a third of n minus a Third. Okay, good. 
And then um, 1 to 1 equals 3n into, I'm just cleaning up inside the brackets. I think 1 over 3n is the only surviving term because 2 over 6 is 1 over 3. And that will simply delete the other 1 over 3, aka cancel. They subtract each other to a 0, leaving us just with the 1 over 3n. Now, if you multiply 1 over 3n by 3n, you get 1 to 1 equals to just n squared. And I think you'll agree with me. For us to work out the value of n, we need to square a root on both sides. Obviously, the square root of the misnumber has to be plus or minus. So I'm getting n can either be 11 or negative 11. But again, we're talking position. Therefore, n has to be 11 because... Uh, and that's the symbol for because, by the way, in case, in case you didn't know, that's the symbol for because. Because n can only be a natural number. Position can only be positive. Okay? You can be in position 1 or position 2 or position 3, but you can't be at a negative position. Very important. Now, the question was not asking for n. Let's go back and think about what they were asking us to figure out. They're asking us to figure out what that number at the top needs to be. What is that k value supposed to be? Okay, so I think the algorithm for working out the number of terms when you're dealing with sigma notation is what you see in green. This thing that you're going to see in green here, very important. The number of terms when you're dealing with sigma notation is always the top number, take away the bottom number, and then add one. So it's k minus zero plus one. That is the algorithm that we use to work out the number of terms that are added when you're dealing with sigma notation, right? So if I engage that algorithm to try and figure out what k is, paying attention to the fact that we have k at the top and we've got p starting at zero here, for whatever general term that you're looking at, if I'm looking for the number of terms that are added, the algorithm is always the number of terms is the top number, take away the bottom number and add one. And we know what n is, it happens to be 11. The top number happens to be k, top as in that number there, bottom as in this one that you have over there, okay? This is the bottom number that I'm referring to when I talk about bottom, right? So we are taking away 0 and we are adding 1. I think you'll see here 11 becomes k added with 1, subtracting 1 on both sides. Therefore, we can conclude that k is going to be 11 minus 1, and this is how you end up with this number of 10. Okay. A very interesting question indeed. I hope you guys understand how to work with paper two, paper one, question two, which is basically uh, based on sequence and series.